In the last video, we stacked a short color data set of M20, the Triffid Nebula in Sagittarius, taken with the Chile 2 20 inch reflecting telescope. The data set was extremely small, but the high quality of the instrumentation and sight produced images that, whilst few in number, were still capable of producing a great color image. In this video, I'll show you how that data set can be processed as an RGB and LRGB set using the superluminance frame we created. Let's start off by jumping straight into the Tools tab. Doing this will open a big list of new buttons. Click on the Combine RGB button to open the Image Loading menu. I normally leave the Multiply Scale button on this default setting. Just below that is a drop list and it's from here we assign the color combination method. Expanding this opens a big list of possibilities. You can see that there are options for RGB, LRGB, HA, RGB, HSO and many others that should encompass all modern combination variants. We'll call on the RGB1 option and use this to combine the RGB data that we created in the last video. Click on the Add Channel button to open the directory containing the images. We can select all three images here and click Open. This new menu is where we first check that the correct image is assigned to the appropriate channel. Our composite formula is RGB1, which is fine, and a quick look at the other fields show that the blue channel is correctly assigned. Click OK and then do the same for the green and red channels. Once all three are loaded, we come up to the left and click the Recalculate button. Within a few seconds, we get the combined RGB data that have been auto-scaled by APP. We can tweak that a bit. It's looking quite good. The colours of the image can be enhanced by using the slider set on the left of the screen. I usually find that the top slider for each RGB channel is adequate to boost or modify the colours of the target. Note that to see the changes we have to click on the recalculate button every time. If there is any type of colour residual in the sky background then the lower slider can be adjusted slightly. If, for example, there's a greenish tinge to the background, we can come down to the green channel slider and use the one labelled BG for background. Slightly non-intuitively, we must move the second slider to the right to decrease the green background setting. Once happy with the result, click on the Save button. Remember that this will save the image in the linear format with no stretch applied, despite the image looking scaled. Ensure that the settings are correct in the next menu and click OK to save the image. If you like how the image looks and perhaps wish to save it as a scaled TIFF or FITS file, then come up to the upper right, ensure that the stretch option is ticked and press save. Now I'm not sure if this is a slight bug in the software, but nothing will happen. We must click on the recalculate button again. Now the save menu appears. The file name has been appended with the letters ST to confirm that the image has been stretched. Click OK to save the file. When finished, clicking on the cancel button takes us back out of the menu. Note that both the FITS and TIFF files are visible in the file list window. I'll click on the TIFF file to view it. As it's already been scaled, we'll have to select no stretch to see it properly. Opening the FITS image by double clicking opens it in the linear format. We'll have to choose a stretch parameter to see it properly. The 10% BG, 5 sigma 0.0% base value seems to work quite well. Next, we'll create an LRGB image, so I'll clear these files from the file list window. The procedure is very similar. We'll start off by clicking on the Combine RGB tab again. This time, select LRGB1 from the Process drop list and then click on Add Channel. We can load all the stacked color master frames as well as both the luminance and superluminance frames, so we have five in total. 
The filter assignment menu will open again as before and we can click OK for every filter. As before, click on the recalculate button. Now we have an LRGB image on the screen, but this is made up of both luminance and superluminance frames. You can compare how the image will look with either of these two frames. We'll start off with the normal LRGB image, so we must deselect the superluminance frame by coming down to the L slider in the superluminance group and turn it back to zero. As always, click on the recalculate button to view the updated image. Next, we'll deselect the luminance frame in the same way and turn the superluminance image up to 100%. I'll click on recalculate and we'll see the superluminance RGB version, which will show more detail. At this point, I usually turn on the saturation option on the right hand side. As before, we can adjust the RGB color ratios using the top sliders, so I'll boost the red and blue sliders on this image. Values of around 2.5 for the red and blue will work fine. If there appears any kind of greenish tinge to the background, we can tweak the green BG slider to the right. Here I've raised the value to around 1.03, which has also worked well. It's possible to carry out further processing with the sliders on the right hand side of the screen. The top sliders B, W and G adjust the black point, white point and gamma adjustments respectively. The BA slider is useful for adjusting the sky background and should be used in collaboration with the image histogram shown at the top right of the screen. The ST slider allows a bit of fine tuning on the DDP or digital development processing automatically applied to the image if the DDP box is ticked. The numbers either side of the sliders affect how strongly the changes are made to the image so it's worth experimenting with these for the best results. I like to have the DDP auto and saturation boxes ticked and then control the stretch value of the image using the main scaling drop list just below them. The red box with a question mark on it opens a very useful description of how all the sliders work, although strangely it takes a very long time to appear on the screen. Further down is the saturation slider, which does just that boosting the colour in the image. Below that is the saturation threshold slider which helps to protect the sky background and adjusts the strength of saturation applied to the image when using the saturation button above. Adjusting these in combination works well. Below these is a contrast slider. Moving the slider to the right increases contrast. There are two things to note. One, as you may have noticed already, is that any changes to sliders in this section are applied without having to press the recalculate button. Also, with the contrast slider, the central button returns to the mid position when you release the mouse button and the contrast effect is applied. The bottom pair are used to sharpen the image. The protect slider is used to moderate the strength of the sharpen effect and can be used to help control ringing or dark halos around stars when sharpened. It's very easy to over sharpen images so I advise that these are used in moderation. Finally we can save the processed image by turning on the stretch option at the top and clicking save.